Is this the best thing on? This is the story of an average street in an average town. A friendly neighborhood where people and puppets live in perfect harmony. <sighs> it is the story of an idiot and his search for love, puppet love. You see, Marvin is the kind of guy who can only relate to one type of woman. Ay, ay, ay. But if he is not careful, Marvin is going to wank himself to death. Now, look at this guy. Cool, smooth, good looking. Who is he? Hello, ladies. It's me, of course. Now, I know that to some of you, I may just look like an old towel. But to women, I am, how you say, irresistible. And once a girl has tried a puppy, she never goes back. <sighs> Marvin, Ooh. whatever is going on inside that sick and twisted little mind of yours, Ooh. stop it. Now. The thing is, Marvin has an overactive imagination, but a guy can only spank his monkey so many times before his monkey starts to wonder if there is not more to life than being spanked. I need help. What you need, Marvin, is a girlfriend. But how do I get one? Listen, Marvin, there is nothing easier than meeting girls. There are literally millions of women in the world. Nurses, School teachers, traffic wardens, air hostesses, librarians, police women, women wrestlers. Oh. Somewhere amongst this wonderful world of womanhood, there must be at least one girl who is willing to go out on a date with you. All you have to do is ask. Even an idiot could do that. You've been sitting here for four hours and you still haven't written a single word, Frank. Just start typing. <laughs> if you could just think of a simple title. A title. A one-word title. <laughs> That's all you need. Oh, Christ! You can't even think of a single word. Face it, Frank, you've got absolutely nothing to say for yourself. You are a deeply tedious man with a deeply tedious life. You've never experienced life like a real writer, like Proust or Dostoevsky or Genet. You've never sucked caviar from between the buttocks of French whores. You've never lost a limb in an horrific automobile accident. You've never been thrown into a jail full of Algerian sailors and cruelly sodomized over and over and over again without mercy or compassion. Oh, God! I wish I had been buggered by a gang of sailors. Then, perhaps, I'd actually have something to write about. Is everything all right, Frank? Yes, yes, fine. 
Thank you. Everything's going surprisingly well, actually. <laughs> well, you should take a break. Would you like an herbal tea? No, thank you, Jim. I'd rather just press on with my writing. Sure thing, Frank. Well, just holler if you need anything. <sighs> Maybe Jim is right. Perhaps I could just have a little drink. A quick shot of something. Now, where's that bottle? All I am saying, my fat friend, is that sooner or later, one of us is going to have to pay the rent. I feel like shit. Ed, did you know that you can earn money by getting a job? Do you know anything about molecular biology? Or flower arranging? Ah, caring for the elderly. Hmm, perhaps not. Ed, is there one thing that you love more than anything in the world? Something you treasure and prize above all else? There you go, big man. Mm. Thank you, Alfredo. Hello. Ah, Marvin, there you are. Now, do not turn around. I have found the perfect opportunity for you. Over there is a girl. She is alone. What I want you to do is to go over to her and introduce yourself. I will sit behind you and tell you exactly what to do. Hi, Marvin. See ya. Well done, Marvin. Now, say something nice to her. Compliment her on her hair. You're very hairy. Thank you. No, no, don't say that. Uh, say something about yourself. I'm so lonely. Oh, Jesus, no, don't say that. No, just repeat what I say. You seem like you're desperate. You seem like you're desperate. No, apologize to her. Say you're not good in social situations. You're not good in social situations. Fuck me. Fuck me! You seem a little tense. Would you like a cigarette? Yes. It's going well. She seems to like you. I didn't know puppets could smoke. Yes, yes they can. Are you... naked? I don't know. Am I? This is brilliant. She is definitely interested. You have no idea what you're doing, do you? My! It's hot in here. Ed, can oh. you smell something burning? Oh, oh. You're on fire, you idiot! Oh my god! I am on fire! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Ed, ah! do something ah! about this imbecile, will you? You know, Ed, I have noticed that Marvin's approach to women lacks a certain subtlety. Do you think he's done yet? What happened to your writing, Frank? Oh, I'm taking a break, Jim. I can't be expected to work at that level of intensity all day. You know, Frank, I've been thinking. Maybe we could do something together tonight, just for a change. Well, there is rather an interesting historical program on at 9.30. Oh, Frank, do we have to stay in and watch another documentary about Nazis? Why don't we go out for a nice romantic dinner? We could go to the Bean Eater. I tend to find that vegetarian food rather bland and insipid, and it does make me fart. Oh. You know, maybe we could go clubbing instead. Don't you think we're both a bit old for that, Jim? I tend to find the atmosphere in those places is rather loud and aggressive. Why don't we, uh, steal a motorcycle, head for the coast, and go skinny dipping in the moonlight? The sea would be bloody freezing at this time of year. <sighs> you know, Frank, I'm getting some negative energy from you. Don't you ever feel like you just want to burst out and do something crazy? Not really, no. Marvin, look around you. You will notice there are girls everywhere. They are intellectuals. To succeed in a place like this, you must appeal to their intelligence. Be confident, but not arrogant. Be sensitive, but not gay. Be smooth, be charming, be witty. They are there. Waiting for you. Now go. <sighs> Hello. Goodbye.
Goodbye. How did I do? Maybe we would do better in this surrealist room. Hmm. Mervyn, please excuse me for one moment. Just uh, appreciate the art. Ooh. obvious that Mervyn cannot be left alone for a moment. Do you think it's safe to take him to a bar tonight? Your turn, Jim. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure that mind bendy is actually a word. Frank, something which bends the vibrations of the mind is mind bendy. No, it isn't. It's just nonsense. That's what it is. Oh, it's okay, Frank. I have another word. <laughs> there. Nimi. Yeah, well, that's just silly, Jim. You know, Frank, I'm sure it's a real word. Come to think of it. I think you're being a little neemy right now, mister. Don't be ridiculous. Look, you're making a mockery of the game. In fact, I'm going to put an end to this nonsense right now. Now, where's my dictionary? <sighs> Frank's so far up his own ass today. Jeez, look at him. What a miserable bastard. Does he have any idea just how boring he sounds? Neemy. Sometimes he's just so goddamn British. No. I mean, neemy. Neemy. it's just a f***ing game of Scrabble. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim. I can find no evidence that that word exists whatsoever. Oh, come on. What's a dictionary anyway, Frank? It's just a prison for words. You have such a limited way of thinking about language. I take that as a personal insult, Jim. I am a writer. Words are my tools. That word is not valid, and I insist that you remove it from the board. <sighs> is this it? Is this what our relationships come to? It's Saturday night, Frank, and we're sitting at home playing petty word games with each other. We used to have some wild times together, Frank. What the hell has happened to us? Be that as it may, Jim. The fact remains your word's not valid according to the rules of Scrabble. <sighs> I'm going to go to bed now, Frank. Marvin, it has become clear to me that conversation is not your strongest point. But do not worry. There is another language you can use to communicate with a woman. The language of the body. You see, if a girl likes the way you move and you like the way she moves, then pretty soon you will be moving together and words are not important anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, I do. You're talking about sex. Let us just take things one step at a time, Marvin. Now, watch me and do as I do. Like a puppet who can handle himself. Think you can handle me. 
You see? It's easy. Now you try. Feel the sensuality of the rhythm. Feel it within your body. Marvin, stop making those weird noises. You're scaring her. Now is the time, Marvin. Make your move. I have a bad feeling about this. Ed, would you mind sorting this out? I'm a virgin! Oh, puppets! Sorry, you were saying something about puppets. You want some as well, do you, fat boy? What the f are you looking at? Nothing, mate. Sorry. Ed, this has not gone as well as I had expected. Let us face facts. When it comes to women, Marvin is a total moron. What were we thinking? Marvin is a loser. But I just don't have the heart to tell him. Let me do it. No, Ed, it's nice of you to offer, but I'm afraid if Marvin ever found out the truth, he would kill himself. <gasps> the truth is... Our little orange friend is condemned forever to live the life of a lonely masturbator. Mervyn will never, ever have sex with a woman in his whole life. Thanks for the uh, scrabble. Look, uh, sorry I got a bit uh, competitive. <laughs> I do hope it didn't seem like petty point scoring. <laughs> hmm. Well, good night, Jim. Go f yourself, Frank. Marvin will never, ever have sex with a woman in his whole life. He will never, ever have sex with a woman. Never. In your whole life. Ever. What? Never? No, ever. You'll never know. Never. Is this a dream? Of course it is, you prick. Why do you think we're all floating around like this? Huh. Thank you, thank you. Now it's time to play the game. So, would you please bring on our first deposit? Well-rounded, but surprisingly soft in consistency, the odor is pungent and the color a rusty brown. Eddie, Lupino, I've come to an important decision about my life. Celebrity turn! I'm going to end it. Is it Meg Ryan? Right. I'm going to kill myself now. Bye! I'm sorry, Betty. The correct answer was in fact wrestling champion, The Rock. What exactly is in this juice, Jim? Don't worry, Frank. It's all organic. I made it myself. It's mainly cabbage, but there's also my own, um, bio supplement. Bio supplement? What's that, Jim? Oh, it's perfectly natural. It's a simple urinary extract. Urine. What in God's name? Oh, no, no, name? don't fear it, Frank. It's your body's own medicine. You've pissed in my juice again, haven't you, Jim? 
That's right, Frank. I believe it's these dietary deficiencies that have been making you so irritable recently. What's making me so irritable lately is your new age bullshit and you pissing in my drinks, Jim! I'm still getting a lot of negative energy from you, Frank. This is an outrage. I'm going out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, blimey, this is high. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, what am I doing? This is stupid. I've changed my mind. Oh, shit! There you are. Look, uh, I just went for a walk upon the heath, uh, you know, just to um, clear my mind a little. And, uh, well, I really, I just wanted to, um, to apologise. Oh, no problem, Frank. Mm. It's just part of the yin and yang of any relationship. Yes. I think we've both been a bit uptight recently. Mm. And I feel a lot better now. Who's that, Jim? Oh, um, Brad. Hmm. He just came round to fix the shower. The shower? I... Oh, the shower? I thought you had the shower fixed last week. Oh, uh, well, I uh, felt it wasn't quite right, so I asked um, Brad to come over and do some fine-tuning on it. Oh, it's quite something, the way the hot spray just shoots out of the nozzle and hits you straight in the face. Oh, it makes you feel tingly all over your body. Frank, you seem a little tense. Would you like me to make you an herbal tea? Hmm? <laughs> You're in free. <laughs> yes, or... Oh. oh, it's all gone. Well, never mind. It was just a sample. <laughs> it's just a sample. Oh, God! Oh! Oh! Mm. <laughs> Mervyn. Mum? Can you feel any pain? I can't feel anything. I can't move my body. I'm paralysed. Oh, shit. Thea? You will address me as Mistress Thea. Oh. You're weird. And you are an insignificant rag. It's time we got started, don't you think? Is this going to hurt? Oh, Mervyn, how naive you are. There is no pleasure without pain. Ed, can you hear something? No. Oh, God! There really is nothing to compare with the sensation of rubber against fur, don't you think? If this is sex, I don't want it. I don't need a real woman. I was perfectly happy just playing with myself. Shut up, Mervyn. Do you know what leather is, Mervyn? It's the skin of dead animals. That's what I want from you. I want your skin. And I'm going to rip it from your body. And then I'm going to wear it. I'm going to make you into a pair of woolly socks. I've wet myself. We're going to die together, Mervyn. In ecstasy. All I wanted was a girlfriend. 
And now, Mervyn, I'm going to unravel you. I'm going to pull you apart, stitch by stitch, until you are nothing more than a pile of dirty rags on my floor. Ed, I tell you, I'm sure I can hear something. I swear that damn fool is in there. So, what he is? It sounds like he's being tortured. Seems rude to interrupt. No, I have an instinct that there may be something wrong here. Ed, open the door. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Mervyn, you f***ing pervert. Betty, she's a sexual maniac! I don't want to hear about your filthy sex games, Mervyn. Shame on you. Picking on an innocent puppet like this. Eddie, you don't understand. She said I was a sex slave. Why can't you just be normal like everybody else? Eddie, wait, my arms! <laughs> I mean, I've seen some kinky things in my time. But this, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Bye! <sighs> you know, the sexual urge is a powerful thing. We have seen how it can drive both people and puppets to the most desperate and degrading acts. But, in the end, perhaps everything turned out for the best. Although Mervyn did not find a girlfriend, he did find a solution to one of his problems. And for the moment at least, his addiction is cured. And even the crazy Thea got what she wanted. Isn't that right, Chica? Until next time. Enjoy yourselves. I know I will. <sighs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Coming up next, more comedy. Give my headpiece.